So we've just come out of UT4. And now, we seem to be doing these in descending order today. We're going to go and have a look at UT3, which I'm told has the native name Melipal. Melipal, I got the thumbs up there from Laura. And that is the native word for the Southern Cross, or Crux, which is also the constellation that appears on the ESO logo. And more importantly to me, it appears on the Australian flag. I'm experiencing deja vu. Okay, so here we are, UT3. And I have to say, for, my, for a first timer, the amazing thing to me is how almost identical it feels to UT4. I guess that's kind of the point with these four telescopes, but... There's two aspects to this. One is that, that there is this long-term project to actually run the telescopes together as a single telescope in this interferometric mode where you can actually combine the lights from all four of the telescopes. But it isn't really the main science driver for having four telescopes there. The real reason for having them there is because there's only a finite number of instruments that you can kind of hook onto the back of each telescope. And by having four telescopes, obviously, then you can hook that many more instruments up, which means that you really have that full suite of instruments available all the time. Quite a lot of other observatories switch their instruments around. You know, they'll take one instrument off and put another one on. And obviously, that means that at any given time, you have limits as to what you can actually observe with what instruments you have available. With the VLTs, they don't change the instruments around. That means that all the instruments are there all the time. And again, it adds to this sort of robustness of the observatory, that every time you take an instrument off and put it back on again, something breaks or it doesn't go on quite the same way, which means the calibration of the instrument changes and so on. By having this suite of instruments that's all there all the time, you avoid all those issues and have a, a, a much more robust observatory. So we've got three new instruments here. Let's start off with the Cassegrain. We have Vizier, which is the smallest instrument I've seen so far. It's an infrared instrument, and it's a real little, little mosquito on the bottom compared to some of the others, making a few little noises there. There's a compressor inside, as is so often the case with any infrared in instrument, of course. I would say it's probably the, the premier division right now of, uh, of telescopes are, are the Keck telescopes in Hawaii and the VLT telescopes in, uh, in Chile. Uh, with, with other 8 meter telescopes, uh, a Subaru telescope in Hawaii and the Gemini telescopes in both Hawaii and in Chile, kind of coming a close second. I think what sets probably the ESO VLT telescopes and Keck telescopes apart is partly the fact that there are, there are multiple ones of them. There are two Kecks and there are four VLTs. So you actually have more telescopes uh, which you can mount different instruments on. The big telescope you collect a lot of light but then the question is what you do with that light and it's the instruments on the back are what you then do with the light and you can do all sorts of different things. You can make images, you can make images in different parts of the spectrum so you might have an infrared imager or an optical or an ultraviolet imager but then you can split the light up into a spectrum so you can actually record the colours of the light or look at very high dispersion so you can see all the different absorption lines due to different materials. So really the instruments on the back are what you do with the light once you've collected it with the telescope. And by having a big suite of instruments, that essentially means that you can do whatever you want to do with the light once you've collected it. It's, I would say right now the, the instrumentation suites of the, of the VLT and the Keck are probably the best in the world. So here we are at the Nazmuth here. We have a visible light instrument called VMOS, Multi multiple objects you can track. It's actually being worked on at the moment as well. These instruments are large things. On the VLT, you're talking something the size of a kind of van, usually, small van, uh, hanging on the telescope. Uh, the VLT is, is different to a lot of other telescopes, actually. They don't really move things around much. So they have, a they have an instrument at each of the three foci. Each telescope has three foci, the two Naismith foci and the Cassegrain foci. And there's an instrument permanently mounted at each of these foci. So they have 12 foci, because that's three times four, so they have 12 instruments. And they're, they're permanently living on the telescope. And they don't move them around much. The uh, one exception is they used to have, and they currently still do, and maybe not for long, uh, what's called a visitor focus at the VLT. So one of the Naismith foci or it ha has nothing on it. And what you can do is bring your own instrument out and bolt it on to that focus and, you, and use your own instrument there. If 
if the the other instruments don't perform the science that, 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 that fun give you the functionality that you want, then you can do that. You can bring your own. And another instrument. At this Nazimut, on UT3, we've got Isaac. Isaac is an infrared instrument as well. Look, they've actually pretty this one up a bit. That's unusual. Normally we've got cables and wires and pipes. It's got a really lovely little piece of artwork there. When you're at the VLT with these four famous telescopes, sometimes people forget about this little guy in the corner. This is the VST. It's the VLT's survey telescope. And it does a wider angle of the sky. And we're going to go and have a look at it.